Welcome to Her Story. This game doesn't fit particularly into any one genre, but I guess you could call it sort of a detective FMV investigation game, if that's at all helpful. <laughs> I really don't know if it is. But regardless, it's a very unique game, and I've never seen anything like it, which is why I'm really excited to jump into it. And I'm coming into this pretty much completely blind. I read one or two interviews with the creator before it came out, um, but since then I haven't even read any reviews. I've only played it for just a couple minutes just to get familiar with the controls, and that's it. So let's just jump into this. And before I do, I guess I should also mention that if you'd like to play this game for yourself, you can find some more information in the description. Let's begin. Alright, so here we go. The whole game, as far as I can tell, is played through this basically simulated old computer system. You can even see it's obviously on an old CRT that curves around the corners and you can see scan lines and reflections in the monitor and dust on the monitor and everything. And I think this readme on the desktop probably gives the best explanation for who you are and why you're here. Well, sort of. Hey. Here's the database. I filed a Freedom of Information form to get you guest access. Everything seems to work. They transferred the videos off the original tapes in 1999, and then the Y2K thing hit and they got mothballed. No one has touched them since. I couldn't find the server with the detective's footage on. Possibly those tapes got damaged when the old archives were flooded in 97. But figured this would be enough. Take your time. SB. Okay, so, it doesn't actually explain who I am, but I am somebody who, has, who is using this database as a guest. And someone else has given me guest access by, f by filing a Freedom of Information form. So the entire game is played through this simulated computer, where you're basically researching um, videos of interviews with this woman related to some sort of a murder. So it's like a murder investigation, but you're unearthing documents from a murder investigation that has already happened. So, as far as I can tell, there's no chance of you, you know, catching somebody or anything like that. So there's no, like, tension to catch a murderer. As far as I can tell, you're just digging through the past, you're digging through history. Now, why did somebody file a Freedom of Information form for me? Like, why, you know, why is my character interested in investigating this? Maybe it was a contested murder, maybe I'm a journalist looking to find, see if I can crack this case that nobody else was able to crack. Uh, maybe I'm a family member looking for something. You know, I don't know. It's really interesting just to think of who I am. Why am I doing this? And then I think this explains basically how it works. It's kind of the tutorial, basically. Introduction to the Logic Database Computer technology is the backbone of modern police work. The Logic Database is one of the many continuing efforts to digitize our workflow and preserve evidence in a manner which will allow you to work more efficiently. In the coming years, the computer will continue to be the most valuable item in your crime-fighting toolkit. This database contains footage transferred from the existing Homicide and Serious Crime Tape archive at Portsmouth. It has been automatically sorted using our ASR technology. Each statement made by the interview participants is stored separately so they can be tagged for submission to court. The audio has been digitally cinegraphed and the content of the testimony is attached to each clip. To retrieve a clip, type in a word into the search field. Click search and the database will return all clips in which the speaker uses that word. To narrow search using multiple words, uh, if you're working from a printed transcript, you can be even more precise. So, kind of like a Google search, you know, use more keywords to be more specific. Put quotes around it if you want an exact match. You can store clips for later reference. And if you need any more help, contact the Information Technology Representative.
Yeah, so we're dealing with this very old kind of database. Kind of an old rickety thing, and this computer that I'm using right now is obviously not too modern. Heck, you can even see down here, 232 megabytes local storage used, which is like nothing. Some cool little doodads on the desktop. Do you know what time it is? It's vacation o'clock. <laughs> These cheesy old clocks. <laughs> Database checker. One volume missing. Which might be the footage that the person mentioned, uh, the detective's footage was missing. Maybe that's the volume missing. Not sure. And then there's the rubbish bin. <laughs> which has a, uh, a little, basically, read me for a cracked version of Mirror Game, which is this game. Which you can play if you want to. No thanks. Yeah, so I'm in love with this game just right from the onset because I, I absolutely adore games that try to simulate, like, computer systems and have you use them in a way that, you know, like, there's something really, really cool about using a computer through a computer. You know, because I'm using a computer right now, and I'm playing a game in which I am interacting with a simulated computer. It's really cool. And all the little details of the dust on the screen and stuff, and... Oh my god, look at that! In the reflection on the screen, you can even see my face. I mean, my character's face, obviously not my actual face, but look at that. That is so cool. I just love it. And if you've noticed, every time I click the mouse, you actually hear a clicking mouse sound in-game. Same with the keyboard. Yeah, it's really cool. Alright, so let's start looking for footage. He even makes that clicking noise, like a mechanical hard drive, searching. You know, going through the files. Yes, every one of these clips, murder is mentioned in it. That's how the tag system works. So, let's start watching. You think it's murder? I mean, clearly it's murder. What can I do to help? Yeah, that's me. February, I mean, that was months ago. What's that got to do with Simon's murder? Okay, so I think I'm gonna have to write down lots of stuff, because I need, like, the only way I can find footage is by searching for terms that were mentioned in these interviews. So what's that got to do with Simon's murder? So Simon was apparently murdered, or at least they think that Simon was murdered. So I just wrote that down. And it looks like they're showing her a photograph and asking her, you know, was this you? Yeah, that's me. But I do Simon's murder. Yeah, so it looks like they're asking her, like, is that you in the photograph? She's like, yeah, but that was so long ago, what's that got to do with it? So it seems like they suspected her. I didn't murder Simon. You've got it wrong. You've got the wrong person. And let's check the dates, too. You can see the dates right there. I didn't murder Simon. You've got the wrong person. That was two days after this one, where they're asking her, is that you in the photograph? And this is from the same interview. Like 30 minutes or so later, it looks like. I'd like to speak to a lawyer now. You have no murder weapon. You have nothing. And all these stories we've been telling each other. Just that. Stories. All these stories we've been telling each other. What stories? Hmm. Maybe that's the term I said should search for. Stories? Story? 
first let's try Simon. This is probably going to come up with a lot. Yeah, 61 entries found. Okay. Access limited to first five entries. Oh yeah, so I heard, I think that was in one of the interviews I read that it's kind of like a... Sort of like a mechanic to make sure that you only find the things that you're like really looking for and that you don't just type in something super generic. That's why they limit you to f the first five entries, right? Because otherwise you could probably just type the. Yeah, like, otherwise you could just type the and get 164 entries and then just watch all of them because every, you know, almost every interview is going to say the at some point. Or is. Yeah, that came up with even more. So you have to be a little bit specific. So Simon is not too specific, but there are some here. So let's just start watching them. Simon. Simon Smith. Last name. He works at Ernst Brothers Glass. They do windows, all kinds of glass. Simon does the more special work. Mirror making, feature windows, artistic things. Really beautiful things. Ernst Brothers Glass. Ernst Brothers Glass. Ernst Brothers Glass. Ernst Brothers Glass. They do windows, all kinds of glass. Simon does the more special work. Mirror making, feature windows, artistic things. Okay. Really beautiful things. Got that written down. Um, Simon is six foot, darkish blonde hair, average build. Um, he's clean shaven. <laughs> With his beard grows, it goes ginger, so he shaves it. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with ginger hair. Uh, I bought a photo instead of a spring photo. This was taken last year on holiday in Rome. Rome? It's the best one I have. Okay, Rome might be something that's come up before. Or maybe after. Maybe they talk about the vacation? Don't know. Wrote it down just in case. It's the Rockington Arms. The Rock. It's run by a nice couple, Peter and Susan. There's some other regulars there that Simon likes to drink with. And the barmaid they're having sometimes, Helen. Peter said Simon had been in and had a few drinks. Peter? Oh my god, I'm gonna end up with just a million notes written all over my paper. I've already got so many. Yes. There's an abstract one. No one uses it for very much. There's a printer so you can write letters on it. Simon sometimes plays games. You know, climb the tower, save the princess, that kind of thing. Simon isn't the type to run off or do anything crazy. Someone must have done something to him or there must have been some kind of accident. So what do we do next? Okay, so it sounds like at this point she's reporting um, Simon as a missing person at this stage. Yeah, it sounds like she's reporting Simon as a missing person. She said, they said I should bring in a picture. So yeah, she's reporting him as a missing person. And then later they started to suspect her. Uh, later they started to think that he was murdered and think that she was the one who did it. Um, hold on, let me add this to session, and then search for my original search. Okay, so this is when they thought she was a murderer, right? And she asked for a lawyer. So what are the dates? It's not that long after. It's only, like, a month. 18. 18. And then the third of next month, it's only like two weeks after reporting him as a missing person that they started to think she was a murderer. Hmm. Okay, so if she thinks, or if she reported him as a missing person, then she probably said missing at some point. Right? One entry. I thought it made me sound suspicious. 
It's not a normal thing to do, to drive to the other end of the country. I just, I wanted to keep it simple. I know it was stupid not to tell you everything. Saying I spent the night in Glasgow when my husband went missing, I thought it would, you know, distract you from what was important. It's different now. Now he's... Now that he's dead... Okay, so they found his body then. They must have found his body. Otherwise, why would they leap to the conclusion that he was murdered in only two or three weeks? I mean, for a missing person, to think that they were murdered, you'd have to wait a lot longer than that. They must have found his body. So Glasgow. She spent the night in Glasgow when he went missing. I got in the car, and I drove. I just kept driving north. Just kept going, just wanted to get as far away as I could. When I finally stopped, I was all the way up in Glasgow. I was so tired. I just had to sleep. Yes. Um, I got to Glasgow, I was exhausted, so I pulled over and slept in the car. I woke up because a rubbish truck went past. I got some petrol, bought a coffee and a pastry, tried calling someone from the payphone, and then headed back. Okay, well, why did you go to Glasgow in the first place? Yeah, that's Simon's watch. It was a gift from Eric. He got it this year. It was a wedding anniversary gift. Steel. It would have been Diane who chose it. She has really nice taste. That time, you must eliminate me. I was in Glasgow then. So, she's using Glasgow as her alibi. Apparently they weren't convinced. If they kept accusing her of murder, to the point where she wanted to get a lawyer. No, I don't think so. Glasgow was deserted that early in the morning. Okay, that's probably them saying, did anyone see you? You know, are there any witnesses that can confirm that you went to Glasgow? And that's her saying... No, I don't think so. Glasgow was deserted that early in the morning. When I arrived in Glasgow, I was exhausted. The streets were empty. I was driving badly. And I hit a taxi. Not a big crash. Just paintwork. Wait, did you say she was tired? The streets were exhausted. Yeah. The streets were empty. Badly. And I hit a taxi. Not a big crash. Just paintwork. The guy was so pissed off because I didn't have a driving license on me. But when I told him I was pregnant, you know, he made sure I got to the hospital so they could check me out. It was fine. The hospital must have details when I was looked at. There's a scratch on the car. The guy was so pissed off because I didn't have a driving license on me. Why didn't she have her driving license on her? She was driving exhausted without her driving license. And she was pregnant. What What was she doing? And also, she was pregnant. Could that have anything to do with this? Well, obviously it could. Hmm. Um, let's see, search for any mentions of her pregnancies. Oh yeah, there's a bunch. Ten entries. I got pregnant. Both our parents had a big powwow. We weren't even in the room. And they decided we should get married. 
so that's her explaining why they got married. So it sounds like they were kind of pushed into marriage after she got pregnant. It looks like this interview here is the day after this one. This one's the 26th, and this one's the 27th. Yes, I'm fine. No, I'm sick again. This happened some days. I'm pregnant. This morning sickness. No. Well, yes. You found out on my birthday. I told him I was pregnant. Ooh. Music. It's Rapunzel. The story starts when she's born. Mother Gothel, a witch, takes Rapunzel from her parents and keeps her locked up in this tower. Rapunzel gets pregnant by the prince, and Mother Gothel is furious, so she cuts off her hair and throws it. Actually, her hair's already short here, so that's already happened. But she throws her into the wilderness, and Rapunzel is reunited with the prince, who's blind. But she kills him with her tears, and so it's a happy ending. <laughs> is that too much? Uh, let me get rid of these. Can I get rid of them? There's gotta be a way. Ah, whatever. <laughs> Maybe they just automatically get knocked out when you add more. Oh yeah, by the way, you can uh, move the desktop icons around if you want. Cool, huh? Whoops. Any more mentions of the watch? Yeah, five, actually. He was wearing, um, a shirt. Okay, this is during the, like, the very first time she was interviewed, I think, where she's filing her missing persons report. A shirt. With a blue turtleneck shirt and jeans. He has a watch. It's a really nice one. That was a gift from his boss, Eric. Mm, he had his coat, a long grey duffel coat, like Paddy's and Bear. But he would have taken that with him, it's not in the house. I guess you could call it that, but we were both, both happy to get married. It was a beautiful wedding. <laughs> We had our first dance to come back and stay. I'm not sure if that's a good wedding song, but I loved it. I chose it. I mean, it was genuinely our first dance. We'd never danced together before. It was probably awful to watch, but I enjoyed it. It felt like it was just me and Simon for that moment. Just the two of us. I really do wonder who I am. My character. You know, why am I interested in this case? So it's the year 2015. So the year's 2015, and this footage is from 19... 1994. So it's been, like, 21 years. I guess you... 21... years. 21 years, and she was pregnant. 
21 years is old enough for the child to grow up and become curious and perhaps want to look at this footage. I want to see my reflection more. Do I look like a 21 year old man? Or woman? Wait, was it a son or a daughter? Did she say? Now I can't remember. Well, yeah, do I look like a 21-year-old person? It's really hard to tell. From what little I can see of the reflection. I need something that's like pure black to see the reflection better. Hmm. Yes. Meat fight. We fought on the beach once, and I held Eve's head underwater. There was no one else around. It was at the far end of the beach. And I held her head under, and I kept it under. And for a moment, I just wanted to kill her and watch her drown. But that was it. It was just a moment. We made up afterwards. It was a love-hate relationship. Held Eve's head underwater. Who's Eve? Talking about stuff she did as a child? A sister, maybe? Held Eve. 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 It happened very quickly. We hardly had to talk to each other. We agreed almost silently. The baby was what mattered. We'd help each other. We cleaned up. We bagged up the broken mirror, her clothes. They're gone. We took him down to the cellar. We knew I, we had an alibi. And we wanted the body to be found later. Uh, what? We wanted to have suspicion on us so we could then disprove it, rather than have it linger. Better to keep the body in the house than risk being seen with it. The watch, that was my touch, to make sure the alibi stuck. Um, okay, I just stumbled upon a very, very important clip. I'm gonna watch that again. It happened very quickly. We hardly had to talk to each other. We agreed almost silently. The baby was what mattered. We'd help each other. We cleaned up. We bagged up the broken mirror, her clothes. They're gone. We took him down to the cellar. We knew... Bagged Wait. Up the bro broken mirror? Her cl Who's her? We agreed to help each other. See, at first when she was talking about that, we hardly had to talk to each other, we agreed almost silently, the baby was what mattered. At first I thought she was talking about, um, her and her husband, you know, were deciding to break up and they're breaking up and they're saying that they would support each other, you know, in raising the child or something like that, but that's not what she's talking about. We'd help each other. Who would help her? We took him down to the cellar. They've gotta be talking about Simon's body. We had an alibi, and we wanted the body to be found later. Okay, and as we know, the body was found later. Wanted to have suspicion on us, so we could then disprove it. Rather than have it linger... Better to keep the body in the house than risk being seen with it. The watch was my touch to make sure the alibi stuck. How did the watch make sure the alibi stuck? Could it be Eve, her sister, or whoever she was talking about? A friend? Uh, whoever Eve was? Hold on. Hold on. Add that to session. I want to save that. When did she mention... Um, Story. 
She mentioned telling stories to each other. We're just telling stories to each other. I want a, I want I a lawyer. To Simon. You've got it wrong. Um. Why did she mention wanting a lawyer? It's got to be this one. I'd like to you have no murder weapon, nothing, all these stories we've been telling each other. Just that stories. Uh, Hold on. Add that to session. Okay, what's the dates here? So this is the one where she seems to be confessing to the murder. Seems to be, but I don't know, I feel like it might be something other than that. Because I can only, I only have a tiny clip of it, you know? I don't have the whole story. So let's not assume. Okay, so her, apparently, confessing to the murder, happened right before the clip of her saying that she wants a lawyer and that what we've been talking about is just stories. Yeah, in fact, the clips almost lead directly into each other. There's only about... There's only about a, like, eight second difference between these two where maybe another clip exists, but otherwise they lead right into each other. This. It happened very quickly. To make sure the alibi stuck. And then the very next clip, pretty much, is this. I'd like to speak to a lawyer now. Please. You have no murder weapon. You have nothing. And all these stories we've been telling each other, Alright, so she mentioned people helping each other, so I want to search for Eve, see if maybe that's the person she was talking about, but actually, there's some other entries mentioning a lawyer, so let's go with those. Can I leave? Are you going to arrest me? No. They'd laugh you out of the building. A lawyer would make mincemeat of you. Yes. I understand my rights. No, I don't need a lawyer. Oh wait, is this the missing, like, eight seconds? Let's see. Oh, no it isn't. That's... No, no, this clip is from, like, a half hour before. Yes, I understand my rights. No, I don't need a lawyer. So just a half hour before, she was asked if she needed a lawyer, basically, and she said no. But then within that half hour, she changed her mind. Can I just continue adding stuff to my session here? And just sort them all? I wonder if I'm maybe supposed to sort these all into a coherent timeline. Yes. No lawyer. What are you going to arrest me for? Yeah, I think maybe you can just store them wherever you want. Well, in that case, let's put these in the right order. There we go. Okay, that's right. I guess I should just be storing all of these in the right order, probably. There's got to be a limit, right? Is there a limit? Let's see. This should tell me. Yeah, destroy cliff for later reference. Hmm? Doesn't mention a, a limit, so... Yeah, I guess I should have been adding all of those. Well, let's add this one too. from a day before all of these. Then again, I don't maybe you're not supposed to do it, because it seems really cumbersome to actually scroll this back and forth. Like really cumbersome. If I end up with two hundred clips in here, it's gonna be a nightmare. Yeah, I don't know. 
It'd be nice to do it, but I think that would take a long time once you get a bunch of clips in there. Okay, so I was thinking about searching for Eve. So this is the one where she mentioned Eve, right? Yes. Yeah, we'd fight. Her and Eve would fight. So add that to session. Well, my friend Eve. So she's a friend. Okay. I mean, she was a friend from when I was a kid. And she was always more popular with the boys. And I used to hate her for it. I mean, really hate her sometimes. A police station. Yeah. When I was young, we ran away on my birthday. Bob Dylan was playing in London and we thought we could break into his tour bus and have him take us with him. <laughs> the taxi driver we paid to drop us off. I mean, we'd saved money, pinched a bit here and there to pay for the fare. He was suspicious because we were so young, so he told the police. So they came and picked us up and took me back to Portsmouth. My mum picked me up from the station. But I blamed everything on my friend Eve. So my parents let me off. Wow, okay, so he blamed everything on Eve and he also held her head underwater and wanted to drown her once. Man, that doesn't sound good. Um, but she said she's taken back to Portsmouth, which is also where this place is located where I'm at right now, where these documents are, so I guess... I guess she lived in Portsmouth as a kid and I guess she continued to live in Portsmouth. Up until the time when this happened, if the documents are actually stored here, I would guess. Poor Simon. When when was this? Thirty six. Two seven. So that's early on when she was still basically just reporting him as a missing person, but she said poor Simon, which means she knows what happened to him, right? At that point in time. She didn't honestly believe that he was a missing person. And... Yeah, so I just realized her name is Hannah. I, I didn't realize I didn't know her name until now. Oops, I didn't mean to add to session. My mother called me Eve. Hmm? My mother called me Eve. I'd really like to know the context on that. Why did your mother call you Eve? Let's put that in order. Couple minutes after this one. Hmm. Okay, what to search for now? Eric gave the watch to Simon. Eric gave the watch to Simon. I've already searched for watch. Let's search for Eric. So, it was Friday evening. We had an argument. He left. On Saturday, he didn't come back. I waited all day. He was supposed to go help Eric out with something on the Saturday afternoon. They had a job, but he didn't show. So Eric was ringing on the phone. I checked at the Rock, that's our local. They said they'd seen him on the Friday night, but not since. He 
He still wasn't back this morning. Just isn't like him at all. Still not back by dinner time. It's getting dark again. So I decided to come see you. His parents haven't heard anything either. Yes, there's a car that we share, a Cavalier, and a van he uses for work. It's owned by Eric, but we look after it. Both of them are there now, parked in the street. I'm not sure about the keys for the van. I can look for you when I get back. Yes, that would be in his wallet. It's a visa, a silver one. He doesn't like to spend money he doesn't have, so... He usually pays with cash, but Eric convinced him to get one. Well, Eric was like an uncle to him. They were pretty close. They spend a lot of time with each other, especially when they have to go to conferences. Have you met his wife, Diane? Let's search for Diane, Eric's wife. <laughs> Diane is really nice. She helps out at the glaziers, organises the Christmas party, that sort of thing. They have two kids, really sweet kids. She used to look out for me when I worked there. Not really. He would go to the pub. He had his drinking buddies there, but no one ever really came back to the house. Sometimes Eric, his boss, and his wife would come in for dinner. That would be us returning the favour. Diane is a really good cook, into her trendy ingredients. And the last time Simon cooked something off MasterChef, he got the recipe off Seafax, and I did my Lloyd Grossman bit, commenting from the sidelines. I had to find fennel from the supermarket. Have you ever eaten fennel? Uh, why does she have a guitar? Simon and Eric arguing? No, I can't imagine they'd be arguing. And they get on so well. Unless it was something to do with work. Maybe Simon was being too much of a perfectionist. But I don't know. You should ask Diane. I really want to know why she has an acoustic guitar in the interview room. Uh, let's see if I can find any mention of it. You want me to play something? Why? Not the world's greatest guitar player. Why is that guitar yeah. there? Probably needs tuning. No. It's okay. How about a traditional ballad? Should be right up your street. There were two sisters came walking by the sea. Okay, I'm just going to pause right here and say that this has major, major, major similarities to what she's talking about with Eve. Just think about that. I'll, I'll come back to that at the end, but just think about that. The 
watched her as she slowly drowned all the dreadful wind and rain. Oh, she floated up and she floated down all the wind and the rain. This song is really creepy. And then it gets weird? I'm sorry, your song just talked about... Pushing someone down, holding her down so that she drowns. Watched her as she slowly drowned. She floated up, she floated down. Floated till a ship came by. And then they found the body. I'm pretty sure it got weird, like, right from the beginning. Um, so she said what? This was a traditional... How about a traditional ballad? Should be right up your... your street. This is a traditional ballad? Alright, that's weird enough, but again, this has two major similarities to what she was talking about with Eve. One is the whole... Um, drowning somebody. Right, this song is about drowning somebody and watching her as, as she drowns. And she was saying that as a kid, she tried to drown Eve and, like, really wanted her, wanted to drown her. But then stopped. But that's not the only similarity. She also says... Two sisters came walking by the sea. Alright, so her and Eve were kind of like sisters, even though they weren't. They were friends, but it seems like they were like sisters. In fact, Hannah even mentioned that her mother called her Eve once, right? Maybe they were so much alike that even her mother called her by the wrong name once. So I think it's fair to say they were probably like sisters. So, in the song, there were two sisters walking by the sea. I was one pushed the other one in. They both loved the same person. Both had a love for the captain's son. But he only cared for the youngest one. The eldest envied her sister fair. Talking about a sister being jealous of... of her other sister's beauty. with a pretty little face and her long blonde hair being jealous of her sister's Isn't beauty did she not say I don't know where did she not say something about being jealous of Eve let's actually search for that let's use two keywords Eve um god what what did she say exactly I need some other keyword did she say jealous um Eve Pretty. Um. God, what would she say? Eve. Uh, good. Good looks. Dang it. What? She. I know she mentioned that in a clip. I used to. Did you say I used to hate her for it? Hate. Hate her. Maybe it's one of these. Well, my friend Eve. She was a friend when I was a kid. Okay, well, she didn't say that she's jealous of Eve's good looks, but it's well, kind of similar. My Eve. I mean, she was a friend from when I was a kid, and she was always more popular with the boys, and I used to hate her for it. Yeah, she didn't say that she's jealous of how she looked, but she did say she was Eve was more popular with the boys, and she used to hate her for it. Really hate her sometimes. Hmm. Hmm. This is freaking fascinating. This this is so cool. All right, so I'm gonna end this episode right about here. I think it's a pretty good stopping point because I've just like discovered something really really cool, this strange connection between this traditional ballad, as she calls it, 
I guess it is a traditional ballad, but I don't, I don't know. I'm going to assume she's telling the truth there, but it's a creepy ballad. And a connection between that and her relationship with her friend, her childhood friend, Eve. That's just... That's so strange, but it feels so satisfying to have just found that connection. This game is so cool! It's really cool! I adore the simulated computer interface interaction kind of thing. I love it so much. And... but... More than just that, just th this process of trying to find information like this, it's really satisfying. It's really, really satisfying. Like, I'm putting so many things together. I love it. This game is so cool. Alright, well, I hope you have enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm going to start continuing down my list of keywords and start finding some more information.